Okay guys, so hopefully you could tell by the uh, intro that uh, these reels are very, very similar in a lot of ways. They all have ultralight magnesium frames with some form of carbon composite side plates and they all have 10 ball bearings. And plus, they all are around $300 to import here to the United States if you want one. So very similar specs from three different companies. But now it's time to talk about the differences between them. And I think this is probably more important for the guys who may be looking to buy one of these reels. And you kind of want to know the differences from somebody who actually owns all three. Okay, so let's start with the components. Now the Revo and the Daiwa SSR both have 80 millimeter handles. The Daiwa SSR has a, an aluminum handle, while the Revo is the only one here that has a carbon fiber handle. And the Aldebaran, this has an 84 millimeter handle and it's also got gold anodization as you can see right here. So a little bit of color in the handle of the Aldebaran. And all of them are swept or bent. Now let's talk about the knobs. The SS hair inherits the Zion skeletal knobs from the super expensive T3 Air, as you can see. Now Daiwa stated that this is to enhance sensitivity if your fingers are actually touching the metal portion. I can tell you that I don't fish it like this because it gets uncomfortable after a while. I actually put my fingertips on these, this little flat area here and it's pretty comfortable that way. But when I reel the SS Air, I reel it like this instead of like this. Now the Revo is the only one that has EVA knobs and they're fairly comfortable. And if you saw the video review on the Revo, it also comes with an extra set of flat knobs that are also EVA. While the Aldebaran is the only one that has the rubber Septon knobs that are contoured. Now they are not asymmetrical. But uh, this Septon is probably second um, as far as grip when wet versus the EVA on the Revo. Okay, so let's talk about the star drags now. Now the Revo has the smallest drag star here, but it is made of carbon fiber, as you can see there. It's pretty slick. I wish it was bigger though. And it does click, nice little clicks there. But yeah, that's a really nice touch. It helps lighten up the reel just a little bit. And usually aftermarket carbon fiber drag stars cost a lot of money if you can actually find one made for your reel. So that's a nice touch. I just wish it was a little bit bigger. Now the SS Air has a nice big Zion drag star as you can read there. It's a nice big size and the clicks are not quite as loud but they are really precise. But I think the best drag star here goes to the Aldebaran. It's made of forged aluminum so it's going to be the strongest one here. And it's also six pointed as you can see. And it's really big and oversized because Shimano really wanted you to be able to just reach over with your one of your fingers and just kind of turn the handle by flicking that drag star like so. So you can basically work your bait with one hand. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the spool tensions. Now the spool tension knobs are all aluminum. As you can see, the Aldebaran has probably the most uh, conservative designs. This gunmetal with some gold anodization and no surprise here, Shimano doesn't give you a clicker, but it is nice and smooth and kind of hard to turn, which is good, so it doesn't move. But in my opinion, it's got the least desirable 
spool tension here. Now the next most desirable is going to be this Revo LTX. It's probably got the most detailed spool tension. As you can see the logo for Abu Garcia. All the little porting and anodization and it does click. But the SS Air has the best spool tension here by far. It's got this really nice design with the red accents. Very aggressive looking. But the spool tension click is just so precise and positive. There's literally almost no dead space in between clicks on this SS Air spool tension. Unlike the Revo, while it's not as bad as some of the you know American Revos that have spool tension clickers, it's still not as precise and positive feeling. So the SS Air has the best spool tension, in my opinion. So let's talk about the line guides next. Now, probably the least desirable one here is going to be on the Revo LTX. It's got a standard small circular line guide and it's the same width on both sides. The SS Air comes next. It's still pretty small but it's taller up and down versus the Revo. See it's kind of an oval shape but it's the same width front and back. So this comes in second place for being slightly bigger, but the best line guide here by far goes to the Aldebaran BFS. As you can see, it's got this big cone-shaped, egg-shaped line guide that's tapered. So one side is bigger than the other, and it's the same line guide found on the uh, Antares DC. So it's kind of odd that they gave this huge line guide to this little teeny tiny bay finesse reel. Okay, so last component we're going to talk about is going to be the thumb bars. And I would say that the Aldebaran probably has the least desirable thumb bar as far as feel when engaging. But it has the most grip. As you can see, it's got this little plastic piece that helps you grip when wet. And I like the position of it better. It's really high up, gives you nice access to the top of the spool, but uh, it's got a nice positive click, but the others feel a little bit more refined when pressing the thumb bar. And that kind of matters because you're pressing this thumb bar, you know, several hundred times a day when you're casting this thing. So the next best thumb bar feel goes to the SS Air. That's got a nice short travel compared to the Aldebaran. It's got a travel up here and goes all the way down here. This is a nice short travel. It's got a nice refined click and it's got this little uh, red accent for decoration. It doesn't really help you grip it any better, but pressing this thumb bar feels nicer than the Aldebaran. But the surprise here is that a Revo actually has the best thumb bar feel out of all three. Now I wish Abu Garcia would have brought the thumb bar mechanism from this reel and put him on their American market reels. It's nice and soft. The thumb bar is shaped really nice. It's got some contours that kind of help you grip. But yeah, the Revo LTX has the best thumb bar action in my opinion. But probably the worst for actual grip when it's wet. Now incidentally these are all JDM reels but the Revo is made in Korea. Where does it say? Yeah, made in Korea. While these other two are made in Japan. As you can see they're proudly stamped on the reel. Japan and of course the SS Air is made in Japan as well. If that matters to you. Okay, so let's go over the gear ratios and then we'll get to the important parts. Now the SS Air 
comes in the highest gear ratio of 8.1 to 1. That'll focus. And then the Revo comes in a high speed or extra high speed, 8 to 1. And then the Aldebaran also comes in 8 to 1, which I don't believe it shows anywhere, but you can see it says XG on the reel. But the Aldebaran also comes in the option of a slow speed 6.5 to 1. So when it comes to gear ratio options, the Aldebaran is the winner. So we can talk about components all day long, but when it comes to bait finesse reels, the most important components are going to be these right here. The spools and the brake systems. So let's pop the scale out and see what's what. Okay guys, so things are looking up here on my channel as I used all my YouTube money from last month to buy this scale, this upgraded scale from China. So things are picking up here at the Real Test channel and uh, as you can see the results, this nice little brand new scale. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to weigh the actual reels first. Now, these are all considered super ultra light by most standards, but there's actually a difference between them. So the SS Air is supposed to weigh 5.1 ounces. It comes in at 5.2. The Aldebaran is supposed to weigh 4.6 and it comes in at 4.6. Now the Revo is supposed to weigh 4.5 and it comes in at just a little over 4.6. So there's quite a bit of difference between the Aldebaran Revo versus the SS Air. And that's because the SS Air is just physically much bigger than these other two as you can see right here way way bigger than the Revo and even against the Aldebaran you can see the size difference between these two reels and that's why this weighs a little bit more probably over a half an ounce more because it's just got so much extra material more frame material more Zion material so yeah that's the reason for the weight difference despite the materials of the frame and the side plates being pretty much the same on all three reels. So now let's get to the nitty gritty and pop those spools out. So I've popped out the respective spools and all of them feature a 32 millimeter diameter. So they're very small. The average spool I believe for the average reel is probably around 34 millimeters. But these bait finesse reels have 32 millimeter diameter spools because smaller diameter spools take less energy to get going. Now the Revo and the SS Air are the only ones with the short spool shafts as you can see while the Shimano sticks with its traditional long spool shaft which shouldn't make a difference considering the extra weight is actually on the shaft itself but I will say that the spool to frame tolerance is much tighter on the Aldebaran than the other two okay so a couple of other notes here the Aldebaran has this reinforced ribbing on the inner side of its spool so you are able to use light braid on this while I'm not sure about the Revo, but I think I have seen videos of people using light braid on this. But I will recommend you do not use light braid or heavier line on this spool. Now, this spool is made by KTF, and this is the exact same spool that you get on the super expensive T3 Air. Okay, so one thing about this spool, it's supposed to be made of G1 Duralumin, which is supposed to be one point three times or 1.4 times stronger than the super door lumen of these spools but I think that's false and let me show you why 
hopefully the camera will pick it up, but I put tape around this spool rim so I can remove the bearing. And even with the tape, the spool bearing remover damaged this spool. And it really pissed me off. I hope you guys can see that there's a, a little mark right there. There's another one down here where it rubbed off the anodization. So as far as the G1 being stronger, I don't think that's true. But anyway, as far as the looks, the Revo definitely has the best looking spool in my opinion with its uh, oval porting, but let's get to the weights. Okay, so the SS Air has a spool that weighs 9.13 grams and the Aldebaran has a spool that weighs 7. Point, pretty much 7.7 .7 grams while the Revo has a spool that weighs 7.6 .6. so you're automatically thinking that the SS Air has the heaviest spool here by far and that's true when it comes to the overall spool weight but when it comes to the actual rotational mass it's actually going to play out like this the heaviest spool here is going to be the Aldebaran at 7.2 grams because it has this really teeny tiny bearing and then comes the SS Air if you take this bearing off this spool weighs 6.8 grams and then the lightest by far is this Revo spool coming in at 6.3 grams if you take this bearing off. And I think they achieved that by using a aluminum spool shaft while the others are stainless steel. So basically you have about a gram difference between the Revo and the Aldebaran with the SS Air smack dab in the middle. Now incidentally the Aldebaran actually holds a little bit less line than the others. This is rated at uh, 45 meters of 8 pound line while well, the other two are rated at 50 meters of 8 pound line. Okay so let's get to the probably the equal most important part of a bay finesse reel and that is the brakes. So I pulled the side plates apart let's talk about these brake systems. Now the Revo features the MagTrax 3 and it's very adjustable in the fact that you can actually remove magnets and change configurations but it's kind of impractical in the fact that if you change the lure weight um, they say the optimal setting on Abu Garcia's website is to remove certain magnets so out on the water that's going to be pretty impractical but the external dial has 28 different adjustments or settings I should say and if you, you know, turn this dial, these magnets move back and forth closer to this metal ring providing braking force. Okay, and then we have the Aldebaran with its, in my opinion, revolutionary FTB system, which I've explained a few times, but I'll go over with you guys again. It's called the Finesse Tune Brake. And it basically features a bank of magnets on each side of this hub and one side of each magnet is spring-loaded so during the fastest part of the cast the side that's spring-loaded actually pops up as you can see there and provides the max braking during the the time of the cast where it needs it most which is right at the beginning and of course you have your near infinite adjustments made with this outside dial that move this closer together and of course these magnets interact with this unported part of the spool just like so okay so let's get to the SS Air and this has the air brake system now basically there are little round magnets positioned inside these rings and when you turn this dial 
the magnets will rotate and then you know you'll go from positive to negative etc etc and it interacts with the air rotor this little piece of metal goes in between these rings now, the thing about the air brake is that it provides the maximum amount of braking for the longest period of time and it accomplishes that by having a rotor that twists that's also spring-loaded but it only twists forward or backwards it doesn't twist just you know stationary so if it's gonna twist it's gonna twist forward and it's gonna twist backwards so the air brake tends to be over braked for my testing but we're gonna see what happens against these other two so yeah the basically the Aldebaran and the SS Air have dynamic brake systems where the magnetic field fluctuates during the cast while the Revo has a static magnetic brake where the field is the same distance during the whole cast. And I think that's the weak point on the Revo. Okay guys, so the next step of course is to take all three of these reels out on the field to do a distance battle. Now I'm going to spool them up with 4 pound mono and we're going to be throwing the same lures as the big 7 way shootout. We're going to throw the 1 8 ounce Rapala Minnow and I believe 1 8 ounce is probably the upper end of bait finesse at least in my opinion. And then we're going to throw probably the more important lure and that is the true 1 16 ounce little mini crankbait. And in my opinion, with my memory on how these reels cast it out on the water, I'm thinking the Revo LTX is probably going to easily beat these other two. But just to throw a uh, wrench in the works, I'm going to include a secret reel also in the battle, which I'm going to feature in another video. Now, the Aldebaran and the SSR have actually battled each other throwing these two lures once before in the big seven way shootout but that was using a short five foot long trout rod now this time around we're going to be using a more traditional six foot five inch JDM bait finesse bass rod the major craft Corza that's got a lure rating of one thirty second of an ounce to one quarter of an ounce so this test was already done by the Scorpion BFS and the Alphas Air. And we're gonna see how these stack up to those two. So I'll see you out on the field. Okay guys, so we have the Aldebaran BFS. We have the spool tension set to just minimize the side to side play. I have the external dial set to four and we're going to be throwing the 1 8 ounce minnow. So let's go. Okay guys, once again we have the Shimano Aldebaran spool tension set to just minimize the side-to-side -side play and the brake is set on 4 again. 
and we are throwing the 16th ounce crankbait. So let's go. Okay guys, up next we have the Abu Garcia Revo LTX BF8. I have full tension set to just minimize the side to side play. And I have the brake set one click out for maximum. That's the lowest I could go. Of course we're starting out with the 1 8 ounce minnow. So let's go. Okay guys, once again we have the Revo LTX and the brake setting is exactly the same. Throwing the 1 16th ounce crankbait, the external dial is set from one click to maximum. So let's go. Okay guys, so up first we have the Daiwa SS Air. I have the spool tension set to just minimize the lateral movement and then I backed it off one click. And the external dial is set to six and a half. And we are throwing the 1 8 ounce minnow. So let's go.
right guys once again we have the SS air spool tension is set the same I was actually able to back the brakes down to six we are throwing the 16th ounce little crankbait so let's go Okay guys, so I'm back from the field and uh, I'll have to say that the results were a lot closer than I thought they'd be. So let's get to it. Now let's start off with the 1 8 ounce minnow contest first. Now coming in third place is the Daiwa SS Air, not surprisingly. Basically the air rotor strikes again, limiting the distance of this Daiwa SS Air to 80.28 feet. Now it did do better than last time by about 10 feet due to the longer rod. But in this company that wasn't enough to get the win. So we'll stick this SS Air to the side. Coming in second place is going to be the Shimano Aldebaran BFS with an average of 91.88 feet. So this also gained some distance over the last contest due to the longer rod. And no, nothing really bad or good to say other than it performed just as expected. Okay, so that leaves the winner. And not a big surprise, but I thought it would win by a lot bigger margin. The Revo LTX BF8 with an average of 94.25 feet. So comfortably outdistancing the Aldebaran by almost a yard. So that light spool really pays off with that heavier lure. And it easily beat the SS Air and comfortably beat the Aldebaran. Okay, so now time for the more important lure the 1 16th ounce little minnow. So this is the real test of any bait finesse reel is a 1 16th ounce lure. Okay, so this is where it got really, really hairy and I didn't know who won until I got home and really just uh, had to do the math to see who won this one. So coming in third place is gonna be the SS Air with an average of 71.88 feet. Now I expected the SS Air to shine and it did but uh, it came in third place this time despite winning the 16th ounce contest in the previous seven way battle. So second place goes to the Aldebaran with 72.28 feet and first place goes to once again, the Revo, but it just barely, barely squeaked out a win over the other two with 72.35 feet. So there was 0.47 foot difference between these three reels throwing this 1 8 ounce, I'm sorry, 1 16th ounce little crankbait. So that was surprising. I thought the Revo would just walk away from both of them, but that goes to show you the power of dynamic magnetic brakes 
And when it came to the 16th ounce, I think I had to crank the brakes up on the Revo all the way almost to the maximum. Well, I had a lot of extra brake left on both of these other reels. Okay, so big surprise there. Now, the other surprise was that the other reel beat all three of them in both contests, but we'll go over that in a different video. So now that we've established that the Abu Garcia Revo LTX BF8 is the ultimate stock bait finesse reel when it comes to casting, let's talk about the real world. Now, in the real world, when the wind picks up or there's a lot of wind or there's uh, various conditions, this would be the last reel I would pick up. And that's because the brakes are really, really finicky on this reel. So you will get the most overruns on this reel out of all three of these. Now, if there's no wind or if the wind is just going one way, this reel is going to beat out those other two as far as casting distance. Now, as far as like cranking the handle and under load, this is probably the least refined. It's still very refined, but against these other two, that's where the Revo loses out. Now let's talk about this Daiwa SS Air. Now this is going to give you the best overrun control, not surprisingly because of the overbraked brake system. So you don't have to worry about the wind as much. Now you'll still get overruns, because when you're throwing teeny tiny lures, you know, even just a sneeze will throw this off and cause an overrun, but the SSR also is the smoothest overall. It's the smoothest, most refined operator, and it's also the smoothest and quietest caster out of these three. It's pretty noticeable when you fish them side by side. Now, I haven't fished it side by side against the Revo, but I did fish it side by side against the Aldebaran. And it is more refined, no doubt about it. And it is smoother, but I will say this, once you tighten the drag up and put some resistance on these reels, the Aldebaran is the smoothest and the most powerful out of all three. It's got the uh, X-Ship dual bearing pinion support. Okay, so basically in a nutshell, if we combined all three of these reels into one reel, that would give us the ultimate bait finesse reel in the world. If you stuck the super lightweight spool of the Revo into the body of the Aldebaran and keep the Aldebaran's braking system and gave the Aldebaran the precision smoothness and quietness of that Daiwa SS Air then you would have the best bait finesse reel ever but as it stands in this distance contest the Revo LTX wins